Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can perform all activities associated with your customers through the Customer Center. While there are a great many features available in the Customer Center, one of the most important parts of it is the Customers and Jobs list. This list is where you can add, edit, and display all of your customers' information, as well as information for any jobs that you create for each customer if you use the jobs features within QuickBooks. You may notice that this list is sometimes called the Customers and Jobs tab within the Customer Center and called the Customer Job List within Forms. Sometimes it's simply called the Customers List. It really doesn't matter what you call it, as long as you realize that it's all the same list within QuickBooks. If you've created a new company file in QuickBooks and you have customers who owed you money as of the start date of your company file, then enter those people into the Customers and Jobs list right after you finish creating the company file. After you've done that, you can then add customers and jobs to your list as the need arises through the daily use of the program. To add a new customer to the Customers and Jobs list, first open the Customer Center. You can do this by clicking the Customers button in the icon bar, by clicking the Customers button in the home page, or by selecting Customers and then Customer Center from the menu bar. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of Control plus J on your keyboard to open the Customer Center and display the Customers and Jobs list. Now at the left side of the Customer Center window is a tab called Customers and Jobs, and you need to click this tab to view customers and jobs entered into the QuickBooks program. To add a new customer to this list, click the New Customer and Job button that appears above the Customers and Jobs tab at the top of the Customer Center window. From the small drop-down menu that appears, click the New Customer choice. This will invoke the New Customer window, where you enter the new customer information. In the New Customer window, begin by typing a name for the customer as you would like it to appear within the Customers and Jobs tab into the Customer Name field. Note that each customer must have a unique Customer Name field value. If you are adding a customer who owed you money as of the start date of your company file, then enter the amount owed by the customer as of the start date into the opening balance field. Then select the start date of your company file from the as of calendar dropdown. These fields are only used when adding customers who owed you money as of your start date. For any future customers that you add, you will skip these opening balance fields. Next, if needed, click the address info tab that appears at the left side of the window. In this tab, you will enter the customer address information as you would like it to appear on invoices and other customer-related documentation. Start by typing the name of the company, which can be different from the customer name value, into the company name field. For individual customers, you can enter their name into the Mr. Ms., First, Middle Initial, and Last Name fields. You can then enter the customer's job title into the job title field if desired. You can then enter the customer contact information that you wish to record into the next eight fields that are available. There are eight data field choices that are shown by default. However, for each field, you can select what data to record by choosing the name of a data field from the drop-down field labels that are shown. You then record the associated customer information within the adjacent data field to the right of each drop-down field label. The data fields that are shown by default from top to bottom and left to right are main phone, work phone, mobile, fax, main email, carbon copy email, website, and other one. Your choices of alternate fields for which you can substitute the default information are home phone, alternate phone, alternate mobile, alternate fax, alternate email 1, alternate email 2, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, URL 1, URL 2, 
URL 3, URL 4, Skype ID, other number 2, and other 3. Now, in the address details section at the bottom of this tab, you can enter billing and shipping address information for the customer. You can type the customer's billing address directly into the Invoice Bill To text box, or you can click the Edit button to the right of the Invoice Bill To field, and then enter the billing address into the fields within the Edit Address Information window that appears. Now if you choose to enter the address information into the Edit Address Information window, then click the OK button when you are finished to display the address that you entered within the Invoice Bill To text box. If the shipping address is the same as the billing address that you entered, then just click the Copy button to copy the billing information into the Ship To text box. In QuickBooks, you can create and save multiple shipping addresses for each customer. Now, you can add a shipping address by clicking the Add button that appears to the right of the Ship To text box. And in the Add Shipping Address Information dialog box that appears, you enter a name for the shipping address into the Address Name text box. You can then enter the address information into the Address, City, state province, zip postal code, country and region, and note fields if desired. Now if you are creating multiple shipping addresses, then you can check the default shipping address checkbox of the address that you want to set as the default shipping address for the customer. When you're ready to save the address, simply click the OK button. You can then add more shipping addresses by repeating this process until you've entered all of the necessary shipping addresses of the customer. Also note that you can select a shipping address from the Ship To dropdown to display it within the address field on this tab. You can then use the Edit and Delete buttons that appear to the right of the displayed shipping address to edit or delete the information shown if needed. To continue entering customer information, click the Payment Settings tab at the left side of the new customer window. On this tab, you enter the default payment information for the customer. You can enter the account number that you have assigned to this customer if you use account numbers by typing it into the account number field. If you want to assign a credit limit to this customer, enter their credit limit into the credit limit field. Next, use the Payment Terms drop-down to select the default purchasing terms that you want to assign to this customer. If the customer has a special pricing level assigned to their purchases by default, you can select it from the Price Level drop-down field. If you think that you will need to use pricing levels, please review the separate chapter on price levels. You can then select a default delivery method for customer forms from the Preferred Delivery Method drop-down. If you accept customer payments through the Intuit Payment Network system, you can choose how you want the payment links to display within customer invoices by selecting a choice from the Add Online Payment Link to Invoices drop-down field. You can then select a default payment method for this customer by selecting one of the preferred payment method drop-down fields choices. Note that if you select a credit card type from this drop-down, then you can enter the customer's cardholder information into the credit card number, expiration date, name on card, address, and zip postal code fields within the credit card information section. Once you finish data entry on this tab, click the Sales Tax Settings tab at the left side of the new customer window to continue. 
On this tab, you can use the Tax Code drop-down to choose whether the selected customer is taxable or non-taxable. If the customer is a taxable customer, then choose the sales tax rate to apply to their purchases from the Tax Item drop-down. We will be looking at collecting sales tax in a separate chapter, which you should review if you will be collecting sales tax. If this customer has a resale number for use, then you can enter it into the resale number text box. After entering the customer's sales tax information, click the Additional Info tab at the left side of the New Customer window to continue. On this tab, you can enter a customer type into the Customer Type field, or you can select a previous entry that you have made from the field's drop-down list. The values that you enter into this field can be used as a way to filter customer reports that you create. You can use the Rep drop-down to assign one of your sales reps to the customer. In the area to the right of this tab, you can enter any information into the customer's custom fields that you have created. We will examine creating custom fields for customers, vendors, and employees in Lesson 3.6. If you are creating a new customer, then you are finished at this point. You won't use the Job Info tab, as that tab is only used when creating a new job for an existing customer. We will examine creating jobs in the chapter on estimates. For now, to add the customer to the Customers and Jobs list, click the OK button. Now you can edit an existing customer's information in the future if their information changes or if you need to return to enter additional customer data. To edit a customer within the Customers and Jobs tab, first select the name of the customer in the list whose information you wish to edit. You can then either double click on the name of the customer within the Customers and Jobs tab, click the Edit button that appears at the right end of the Customer Information section to the right, or simply right-click on the Customer Name within the Customers and Jobs tab, and then select the Edit Customer Job command from the pop-up menu that appears. Performing any of these actions will open the Edit Customer window. You can then edit any of the information shown within the tabs of this window. Once you're finished, simply click the OK button to save your changes and close the window. Also, like accounts, once you have used a customer within a transaction, you cannot delete them from the Customers and Jobs tab. Instead, you can inactivate customers that you will no longer need to view in order to hide them within your list. Please review Lesson 3.8 to learn how to activate and inactivate list items, including customers. Now, if you did, however, create a customer record that you did not use and no longer need, you can delete it. You would do this by first selecting the entry to delete from the Customers and Jobs list, and then choosing Edit from the menu bar, and then the Delete Customer Job command. You then need to click the OK button in the confirmation message box that appears to permanently delete the selected customer entry. Also note, you can click the Collection Center button within the toolbar at the top of the Customer Center window to open the Collection Center window where you can see almost due and overdue customer invoices. If you click the Overdue tab, you can click the Select and Send Email button that appears at the bottom of the window to select customers to whom you wish to email a payment reminder. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.